Janine, how are you going? Another Friday? Another Friday, another Friday. Now, today, you've, you've got this interest in the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what interests you about this subject because for us astrologers, it's a bit, you know, ho-hum every day. But tell us what you want to know. Well, um, you know, we've been chatting about a lot of stuff, right? And um, one of the things you keep saying to me is that Aquarius age is not everything people think it is. Like most people think, oh, it's freedom of spirit it's uh, evolution into the spirit world, it's awakening, it's um, enlightenment. And considering our last video, video last Friday, which was really revolutionary to me in spiritual understanding and awareness on all levels, I just sort of thought it would be a good topic to use to talk for you to talk about and to enlighten us about what Aquarius age may be, really? Mm, mm. Well, look, I think it's a little bit misinterpreted. I know in the late 1960s, we had that musical, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, mm. and it all looked fantastic, didn't it? Freedom of speech, freedom of choice, sexual liberation. We could do what we wanted. We could rebel against our parents. And that was all fun, wasn't it, at the time? And indeed, that was the beginning of this 2,000-year block called the Age of Aquarius. But that, that, that was the honeymoon phase. Oh. <laughs> so that was, when, <laughs> that was when we chucked in authority and we did our marches and we protested and we overthrew dictators. But I, I think it's going to be a lot more complex than that. Okay. And as we get into this 2000 year block, and yes, we've only just started, it's, it's going to take on all sorts of um, shades. So other than freedom of speech, freedom of identity and all of that, uh, what I do see happening is uh, firstly androgyny. Okay, so Uranus is an androgynous plant, uh, androgynous <laughs> planet. Oh, okay. And, um, Androgynous meaning it's asexual, non-sexual, sex, uh, sexually gender neutral. It's not extremely male or extremely female. And you'd have to agree with me, that's really happening right now. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, wow, that's really hitting in. Mm. It's really hitting in. Yeah. Yeah. No one really talks about that bit that our sexuality is going to change a lot. Men will become more like women. Women will become more like men. And we won't be flaunting extremes of sexuality. Um, and, of course, we've got all these this different terminology now and my daughter keeps me abreast with all the new ones. And getting the right terminology is a very Aquarius thing too. Oh, Aquarius okay. is very politically correct. So this is the era of being politically correct. We're going oh to have to get God. it right. Mm. And Aquarius is all about opinions and letting everybody have their own opinion. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, isn't that driving us crazy at the moment? Oh, He's got an God. opinion. Oh, my God. I was only listening to some young girl saying she wants to give up all everybody's investment properties, not that I've got any uh, investment property up to the homeless for nothing too bad if you got a mortgage it's not her problem oh, well, okay yeah. politics <laughs> is the new religion in the age of aquarius so we had the age of pisces prior to this age of pisces was the age of religion so for all of those people out there who have a religious calling in life um you feel passionately about religion I personally love religion, but I'm sorry, that year is over. We are now looking at the end of religion as we know it. The beginning of the age of Pisces was um, when Christ was alive. That was the beginning of our religious experiences, our religions, and um, developing our faith and, and relationship with God. Well, age of Aquarius is here to say religion's over. This wow. is the age of reason. This is the age of science. This is the age of evidence. Whoa. Well, how does that fit in with our spirituality? 
Well, I think, I hate to say it, but religion will be fading out fairly quickly and probably, sorry, but I think Islam might be the last of the great religions to go. It was the last one to come and it will be the last one to go. And it, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, Iceland has just banned religion. Now, Iceland's very progressive. Wow. And it's bad religion for whatever reasons. And I think that's the beginning of the end, personally. And it may take many hundreds of years, but we have 2,000 years to play with here. Yeah. So what will it be replaced with is the big question. Mm -hmm. So it be, will be replaced with ethics and political correctness. So, you know, it'll be about expressing your opinions but not treading on anyone's toes. It's going to be about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do rather than it based on a moral religious code. So we have um, politics will take over. There's no doubt about it. God. But surely we've got to have some spiritual... We've got to I have think... balance in life, surely. That's true. I, I think with the age of Aquarius comes the age of the individual, the recognition of the individual, which was not part of the age of religion. No. Your, your individuality did not matter one bit. No. In true. medieval Christianity, you were a nobody and you didn't have any rights. No, that's right. But, of course, I think, I think the value of the individual will and is taking over. So the individual will have rights, they will have opinions, and they will have their own beliefs, which have to be expressed. And I, I think that will be enough satisfaction for humans okay. to know that they're being heard, to know they have rights, to know uh, they, they can um, say whatever they want. That's going to be enough. We won't be yearning for religion like we used to for that reason so if people can say whatever they want and that's enough for them does that mean that people have like me that have um spiritual point of view or otherworldly point of view will actually be heard or will science uh, further that um knowledge maybe good, more than, a good than us. question if science does further it, it will be a brand new experience, right. like nothing you've ever experienced. Um, I think the good thing is everybody will have a say and you won't be persecuted. Okay. You, you can't be persecuted in the age of Aquarius because you have rights. Okay. Now that's a good thing. You won't be burned at the stake. Yay. But uh, because it is the age of science, it's, it's pretty likely that technology will put a new flavour on mysticism. Mm, because you know, I... we've got the Mandelbrot set and all of that, that sort of stuff that's really that fusion, isn't it, between spirituality and science and you're really into this subject. So. I'm really into science and... Um... And I know that they've got some amazing new science coming out that touches the spiritual world or the other worlds or, you know, other universes or other parallel lives, um, universes that we live. And so I'm really excited about it because I think it'll put validity to what we've been saying for since Neptune came in with our last video. <laughs> and so I think... Um, I think there'll be a lot of new technology, Janine, and maybe we may even have a Stargate and we may have, um, for those who don't know that, that means you can walk through um, a, a gate of some kind or an arch of some kind and be transported somewhere else. So mm -hmm. maybe um, time machines, all that will come in. And, yes, and, and um, you know, maybe... Um, that would make really, and, and, and I know that they're developing a lot of science around getting messages from the other side through radio, TV, computers, things like that. So that's got to explode at some stage. Yeah, right? it will. It'll be like nothing you've seen before. Yeah. So, so 
science will bring that new flavor into spirituality. So that, that's going to really excite you, Jennifer. It does. And you know what? I think it's fantastic because then people will really be able to communicate with their lost loved ones without us, you know, thinking is the medium genuine or not. Mm. You know, they can do it with their own equipment. And I think that's fantastic. But the difference between the age of Aquarius and the age of Pisces in terms of spirituality will be that there will be no worship anymore. No one's going to be worshipping anybody. No one's going to want to go to congregations and, 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 and talk to gurus. There'll be no adoration. There'll be none of that. Well, that's it. It will be, be an individual thing. So you, you're on your own individual spiritual yeah. journey and you won't be joining up with the collective. Well, you know, that's so interesting you say that because, you know, if technology breaks down that mystery, that unknown world, and brings it into your lounge room, why would you need religion to explain that to you? Well, I know all the churches have to stay at home now, don't they, and do it all online. And, and you know, like, if, if the, what happens after death is the riddle is shown to be solved or nearly solved, what, what would you need religion for? Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm saying. In the age of Aquarius, mm -hmm. where individuals are very well represented, there's no need to join a church. No, that's There's not. no need for that collective sharing of gurus and priests and, and healers and whatever. It'll be a purely... Uh -huh me experience wow well you know i think that's fabulous and that yeah, that's um, like that. yeah that's fabulous and i and i think that I'd lo i'm all for freedom of you know whatever your belief is i'm all for freedom of that so and um to have stuff to prove it wow that would be so great wow. so there's a couple of other areas mm -hmm. to talk about one is uh you know, it, it is the era of the individual. And when individuals are becoming extremely individual, they're very selfish. Mm. So this is the era of self-centeredness. Oh, now, the age of Pisces was about giving and devoting in service to another person. We weren't always successful at that, but it was about, you know, I give my life to you. I do everything for you. It was lots of guilt and shame and it was all that selflessness, especially when you think nuns, you know, went, yeah. went to the nunnery their whole life and served Christ. I mean, all of that rubbish. Yes. Well, it definitely won't be like that anymore. It's all, it's everybody in for themselves. <laughs> So, you know, you do see this, I'm sorry to say, with the younger generation, they've got a full grip on their own individuality and, and, and they've got good boundaries. They just don't want to sacrifice very much for anyone. And um, they're just all, all out for them. And, and, and look, they're well designed for the age of Aquarius. So I think us, us pre-millennials are going to get a little bit precious around them because we're from the age of Pisces where we're all real sensitive. Um, but, but these age of Aquarians, it's like, well, you know, it's your problem. <laughs> Whatever guilt you feel is your problem. So a lot of selfishness is going to come in. And, but that's only from the perspective of the age of Pisces in the past. Okay. It's extreme self-centeredness. If you're from the age of Pisces, where you were supposed to be selfless, yeah. um, if you could. And if you couldn't be selfless, you lied about being selfless, like the priests. Yes. You, had to, you had to pretend you were selfless. Yes. Um, and you couldn't be seen to be doing anything for yourself. No. Um, another big problem with the age of Aquarius will be madness. So we know in a chart that... Aquarius can be about reason and science and facts and, um, you know, ethics and all those sort of things. But when that's not happening, you get chaos and madness. So we're looking at 2,000 years of chaos and madness. And by madness, I mean mental health problems. Great. Well, we see the mind. well we're seeing a rise in that now. Yeah. We are. 
It's coming on thick and fast. Mental health is the biggest growth industry. Yeah, so if you want a career, want a degree, pick it in mental health. Yeah, and I do think in the age of Pisces, we were emotionally unwell. Yes. And when we got uh, Chiron was discovered in 1977, that was the last opportunity to heal ourselves emotionally. And we all got in touch with our emotions, didn't we, before the end of it, just in the nick of time, because the millennials are not really that interested in emotional healing. No. But uh, they're going to need the mental healing. I mean, anxiety is an extremely... Um, big problem now you know every second client I see is crippled with anxiety yeah it's huge huge and that of course that's on the on the nervous system too Janine so does the does the age of Aquarius what parts of the body does it rule do you think do you think it rules mental and um nervous Um, system things well it's air and air Air. is the nervous system so i'd say brain nerves specifically ankles but that's not really relevant um definitely the intellect okay so maybe we might have more nervous breakdowns and things like that. definitely nervous breakdowns definitely complete and utter mental chaos yep losing your mind you know, it rules the genius, right? So we'll have all these geniuses, tech nerds and everybody just doing incredible things. But by the same token, we're going to get people who completely lose their minds. Gee. Wow. Mm. It'll be too much information, too much coming at us, you know, 5G coming at us. You know, multitasking, everything's going to be so fast and furious, we'll lose our minds. So um, I'm not looking forward to that. I don't get anxiety, but God, it looks awful. Oh, I feel really sorry for people who have it. It's not mm-hmm. pleasant. It's terrible. I know. It's, it's a shocking thing. Um, wow, so that's interesting. So where would it impact as far as politics or... Um, economy or or food or thing practical Mm -hmm. things like that well politically aquarius rules democracy so whether you like democracy or not it's the new religion okay so democracy replaces christianity judaism and islam i think it's as simple as that now communism and democracy are not too different if you compare them with religion you know, there's sort of, you know, all their rights and sharing and everybody getting an equal say. So I think, you know, the birth of communism and the birth of democracy sort of emerged around the same time and it's sort of fused together in European politics a little bit. So um, I think human rights will really be the subject. Okay. You know, we all have to have human rights. So there'll be human rights revolutions as there has been in the last 50 years, human rights revolutions everywhere. So then there'll be no authority. Oh, that'd be an interesting time. Well, no corrupt authority. Sorry. I mean, oh, Aquarius okay. is about transparency. Okay. So I think Enough. Julian Assange has really sort of been a pioneer here because I think what he's representing you know, 50 years down the track, it's going to be completely normal. Everything will be transparent. Transparent. You can't have secrets with Aquarius. Well, that's Um, a good thing. I think that's a good thing. So corruption has to go. Great. We're all looking forward to that because there's so much of it. Um, And maybe that would fit in with the Brexit thing too for England, you know, being independent again. Yeah. I think we'll have, smaller, we'll have smaller governance, but more independent governance. And I wouldn't be surprised if Australia ends up being states when this is the beginning of it. That's another story. So, um, yeah, small independent governance and um, a lot of international communication because Aquarius is multicultural. Multiculturalism will be stronger than ever. We'll all end up chocolate-coloured in the age of Aquarius. Would solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? It would. Genetic. 
So yeah. Aquarius likes to be non-racist, non-discriminating, everybody's equal. So, you know, the mere whiff of uh, authority, despotism, dictatorship, it will last 24 hours in the future. Yeah. You know, the, the era of the age of Pisces, Pisces rules deception. Uh -huh. So in the world of politics, we had a lot of deception. Yes. Everyone was pretending yes. to be something that they weren't. Correct. Cardinals, kings, yes. <laughs> dictators, all pretending to, to be something that they yes. weren't. So in this new era of Aquarius, what you see is what you get. And if they're not performing, they're out. Really? Of course, Australia is ruled by Aquarius, as we oh. know. And Aquarian, Aquarian countries don't tolerate um, autocrats. Ooh, so Victoria's gone down the wrong road, isn't it? <laughs> so, like, we're not very tolerant with authority. So anyone that's too authoritarian, we buck the system and get rid of them. So I think we're going to be pioneers in the age of Aquarius mm -hmm. in that, you know, it's freedom for all. Everybody's got rights. We, run, we operate on a system of ethics and if anybody gets a little too power-oriented, they'll be out. Wow, well, that sounds like a great time. Apart from the mental health, it sounds like a great time. So what about health? Apart from mental health, what about normal health? Is there anything in the Aquarius age that would change health generally? Well, I think we'll all be nervous wrecks. Yeah, apart from that. Mm, I think so, that's the main thing. I, I guess technology is going to rescue us because okay. it's the year of technology. It will rescue us. So in the age of Pisces, the only option you had to cure yourself of a disease was your faith. Yeah. So you now, had to pray yeah. about it. You so, had to get the priest's blessing or you had to have a visitation from from an entity or something like that. There yeah. were no other options. No, and I guess so now it's uh, science. Science will cure us. So it sounds to me like it'll be more technology than drugs, maybe in the future. Bioresonance machines and, and all sorts of things. I mean, the diagnostic area is huge now. Yeah. That scans, MRIs, scan this, scan that, radiology. That's the beginning of it. Diagnostics will be huge. Huge, yeah. Hmm. And I'm, and what I'm feeling too is maybe air travel will change. I think. I don't know how, but maybe it will be faster. Maybe it will be more comfortable. Um, hmm. Well, Aquarius rules interconnectedness, right? Okay. So the interconnectedness of every human on the planet. That's what Aquarian people seek to, to have an experience. So we'll definitely be more interconnected and the internet is part of our interconnectedness. So we'll just get more and more and more connected through whatever means. Right. Okay. Travel. So I know, you know, we have a mutual friend who showed me um, some software he got from America um, that uh, was able to project his image and he was able to talk and see the audience. It was like a virtual reality, 3D image. So we were talking, I was talking to him about how that would affect, you know, um, airlines, hotels, all this sort of stuff, because not everyone will need to go to these places. They can project themselves to the conference or to the yeah. lecture yep. and great. actually be there and see the person in front of them, talk to them, right? Won't be able to touch them, but it was just amazing. And I, and that's already here now. We just haven't seen it released. That's all. Well, Jennifer, look at us. We used to live yep. one suburb apart, catch up yep. for a cup of tea, and now look at us. Yes. Amazing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> look how interconnected we are. We're about 20 centimetres from each other. Correct. And, you know, and I love technology. I think it's the, been a great blessing. And I know a lot of people don't like it and they think it's, you know, going to be the end of our lives having technology. But I love it. I think it's, it's freed up, especially as a woman, it's freed me up. And, and I love it for that. 
I think as an individual, you can look at your astrology chart and ask yourself, where is Aquarius yeah. in your life? Mm. We've all got it. It's all ruling. Aquarius will rule one of the 12 areas of your life. Yeah. So we've all got it. We can't say we don't like it because we're going to be this way in one particular way. I know for me, I've got Aquarius ruling money and income. And I'm, you know, I love history and I'm always in the past and everything. But when it comes to earning money, I'm quite progressive. Yeah. And I'm very independent and individual. And I, I don't like being told what to do and how to earn my money. I'm a real free earner. I earn my own money my own way and I don't want anyone to tell me how to earn it. So um, we all have that streak of independent Aquariusness. Yeah, you know, somewhere or other in our chart. Now, let me think where it is for you. Just I don't know where it is. I have no idea. Yeah, I'll find it. Um, Scorpio, Sagittarius, third house. Th oh, yeah, third house. Third house of communication and and um, the mind. So that's why you like clients. Because you think Aquarius, you, you think technology, newness. And I was thinking the other day when I texted you and you your response was, oh, that's nothing new. And I was thinking how you love new ideas. Yeah. You really love new ideas and you love to think new things. Mm -hmm. So I do. Aquarius rules your mind. Oh, Aquarius rules my mind. Oh. Your mind. So that's why I like to see around corners. Mm. <laughs> that's why you're looking forward to technology because it will speed up your thought processes. Yeah, it will get me to where my thought processes are, I would think. And for me, you know, I, as you know, I was one of the first Zoom people to yeah. earn money online. I, I, as soon as... You told me about Zoom, I don't know how many years ago, and I went, that's exactly years how ago. I'm going to earn money. And I went straight into it, doing consults online. I was one of the first practitioners, readers yeah. I knew was doing stuff online. So yeah. that's my Aquarius yeah. in the area of money. All I was thinking was, you know, this is going to change my income. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just thought it was magic. When um, I found out about it, I thought, yeah, because I think the universities were using it. This is five or more years ago. Mm. And when I found out about it, I thought, I'm going to use that. Yeah. And I did because um, I just thought uh, it's modern, it's forward thinking. I'm sure something else will come, but, you know, I'm sure. And you've got to agree with all this COVID stuff, it's reshuffling our workplace life. You know, it's really maneuvering us towards a more age of Aquarius. Um, well, I suppose life. it would make um, businesses, when we think about it, different, wouldn't it, in the future? Yep. Maybe people will want and demand to be able to work from home if they want to. Well, I, th I wait till the COVID thing passes. People are going to go, no, I want that lifestyle back. Okay. Yeah of working from home and I want better technology, buy me a computer and yep. people will insist on their own, you know, autonomy. Yep. And um, I was suddenly thinking about it the other day and I thought, you know what, they'd have to build hubs like I'm in Geelong. So they'd have to build little hubs that you could meet your fellow worker at least one day a week or two days a week because we are social people. And I think um, some people would need to be able to go into work at least two or three days, you know, a couple of days a week. Perhaps that um, traveling to Sydney out from the other areas or to Melbourne will become a thing of the past more, which I think is a good thing. Mm, it'll be all virtual. Um, I was, I was, um, reading about how real estate viewings to buy houses are all virtual well you know it's funny i because years ago I, my son's in real estate don't kill me but he is and, and he's, um i said to him why don't you get some virtual glasses and film the house and let people see it that way 
and and you can get disposable virtual reality glasses and then that way you can just and i can't believe no one else is, no one's doing it it's just amazes to me i don't i don't know why people aren't doing it it'll all happen it'll all happen um mm. Yeah, so that, that, that's the nuts and bolts of what I think is, is happening. I think we're all going to have to be very patient with the chaos until we have, until we sort out all our, you know, power imbalances. I mean, every, every government's going to topple at some point. Whoa. Okay. Of course, it has to. It has to. We'll have a rotating democratic sort of election process that's really transparent. Yeah. Wow. Well, I look forward to that. And there are some countries are, are way ahead of others, obviously. So there's a lot that have to catch on to transparent democratic voting. I mean, I'm not even saying I think it's the best method. I'm just saying that's the no, Aquarian yeah. way. It well, you know, like, as everything's getting born and spirit always tell me it takes a long time to evolve, it doesn't happen instantly. No. Um, so it will be a slow growth to that. So there'll be lots of mistakes made. Yeah. Hey. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm sure I won't be alive, but I'm sure they'll be sorted by in another thousand years or so. Although Aquarius is very quick. Is it? So, yeah, it's not slow. Pisces is slow. Oh, so I think we might, you know, it's going to be a much faster 2,000 years than ever. Oh, really? You know, oh, and okay. they used to call it the quickening, didn't they, in the 90s? This yeah. quickening was coming and we're in it just fast, fast, fast. Um, I think okay. also, like, Aquarius uh, countries are going to really come to the forefront. That's Australia and New Zealand. And some would say India as well. Yeah, well, I think yeah. he is getting primed to step forward on the stage. Yeah, got the yeah. I know there. everybody's China phobic, but I have to say, in the age of Aquarius, India will be the country. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's very true. Every country has its time. It has its time, and India is well overdue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. India has been severely oppressed. Yeah, it has. For a very long time politically. Yeah, it has. And um, it was one of the first democracies, interestingly. Oh, okay. Very, very um, early democracy. But anyway, I think communism sort of, communism rooted out a lot of the autocratic um, govern governments that, that, was so resistant to change. I think yeah, communism were, was the only way to overthrow them. Yeah, they were almost feudal. Yeah, it was definitely feudal. Russia, China, and some other countries, very, very feudal, and democracy was never going to do it. No. They no, had to do communism yeah. and, and then go to <laughs> democracy. They it had to be fire with fire. Yep. Mm. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, fascinating, Janine. Thank you for that. Has that satisfied your curiosity? It does. It's given me a clear roadmap now. It suits my nature, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to the mental health issues going around, but I'm looking forward to um, uh, technology of the future, maybe travelling to the stars in a spaceship that gets me there in two minutes would be good. Well... There's a few pilots that uh, have quite strong Aquarius in their charts. So I think I think you're right. Space travel, aeronautics, you know, requires very sophisticated technology. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. They're, they're, they're edging their way to it. Well, now we're privatising space travel, right? So it's on its way. Yeah. For better or worse, it's on its way. <laughs> I love it how you're so interested in astrology. You know, the age of Aquarius is a little bit of a dull subject to me, but it's great to see the interest on your face. Well, because, you know, as I was saying to you, so many people think that it's just going to be this amazing, amazing spiritual, you know, reformation when it really... No. But it's in a totally different way from what you've explained. I think it will be a change. 
of spiritual reformation, but not in the way everyone's thinking. You know, religion was very <coughs> attractive when we were very oppressed hmm. and we thought God would rescue us. Yep. So I think we've cha we're changing the goalposts here. Well, yeah. and we're saying, well, I don't need to be rescued. I'm an individual. I've got rights and there's nothing wrong with me because this generation are going to go, well, I'm not broken. What's the problem? Yeah. So they're not going to need God. No. As previous generations who were powerless needed God. And now that we have laws and politics to protect us, we're not, we're not going to have those urges. Well, I guess but the church was the government of the day in many, many countries. And I guess ignorance too. Don't forget many people couldn't even read the Bible. So they had to put it, give it in picture form on doors and carvings and things like that so people could understand the story. Yeah. You know, people were held in, in slavery mentally yeah. in those days, you know, because there was no knowledge given to you. It was a no, privilege. You're in the dark. Yeah, so when the printing press started and then obviously our last video when Neptune started it and writing uh, romantic novels and women stepped up, I think it's great. Um, so, you, know. you think about it, if, if a human has all the rights that they want, they feel empowered. Yeah. They don't have to seek out empowerment. No. So there goes religion, just, just, yeah. just by that very dynamic. Now, the Bible taught us, among other things, ethics. Yeah. And, it, you know, Christianity and Buddhism and... and um, Islam infused that ethics into our politics. So our politics today is, um, and you know, it, it has its ancestry in the Bible, but there's no God in our politics anymore. So you don't kill, you don't cheat, you don't lie, you don't do this and you don't do that. I mean, we took all that now and we made it political and that will be enough for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, I'll sit back and wait and see what happens. Thanks a lot, Janine. It was really interesting. Thank you. Okay. Fun conversation. Okay. See you next Friday.